Today we're talking about radios again. Radios seem to be the most confusing subject out there. People aren't asking what kind of lift to get or what kind of tires they should get. They're asking how do I use this radio or that radio. People get very confused and I think that's because this whole subject of radios and different brands and types of radios is very confusing. So I want to go over the different types of radios that we see most often, what the differences are, some of the advantages and disadvantages of the different types of radios, and hopefully clear up some of the confusion and mystery. Okay, so first, what are the different types of radios and terms that you hear? Uh, obviously you hear of ham, you've probably heard of GMRS, you might have heard of MERS, race radios, FRS, bubble wrap, CB, we, let's not forget about CB, and basically all those names or, or terms are just names given to different bands or groups of channels or frequencies that the FCC has allocated for different use. So we've all heard of ham. Ham is a band or a range of frequencies. It's actually several ranges of several frequencies set aside for amateur radio operators. CB radio is just a range of frequency or a range of channels and the FCC has decreed that Anybody can use those frequencies for a CB radio, assuming that that CB radio meets certain requirements, power limitations, and so on. Same thing with FRS, same thing with MERS, same thing for GMRS. And all of those bands or types of radios have different advantages and disadvantages. So I'm gonna go over those and hopefully clear some of that up so that you can choose what type of radio is right for you. All right, so first let's talk about CB radio. Uh, I've got my CB radio right here. Got to dig it out of the trash can. This is uh, an old Midland all-in-one microphone CB. This is actually a decent little radio. We had this installed in the Nata Rubicon with a big five-foot fire stick antenna and we use this for many years. Let's just go over some of the uh, advantages and disadvantages real quick. So CB radio is really quick and easy. You basically install it or turn it on. You pick a channel and you tell the guy at the other end what channel you're on and you start talking, it's really simple. CB radio is limited to three watts or five watts. It's staticky, it's noisy, it, it doesn't work great. When we had our setup in the Jeep using this specific radio with a big five foot fire stick antenna, perfectly tuned SWR, the best range I ever got was four or five miles. And that was with me on top of a hill, telling somebody else to drive down to the bottom of the valley where I could almost literally see them. And even then I only got four or five maybe six miles range. This radio cost about $65, I believe. My fire stick antenna was $35 or $40. Coax and mounting brackets and everything. When you add all that up, it's $150 minimum to get set up with a decent CB radio. You could certainly spend a lot more. No matter how much you spend, you're not getting any more power. You're not getting really much more range. You're pretty much stuck with the range and quality that is CB radio. CB radio is CB radio. So that's where that goes. Now another type of radio that's really popular is the rugged race radios. Now these look pretty much like the Baofeng radios except they're blue. I don't have one. I'll show a picture. I'll show a picture right here. This is the, the blue rugged race radio. Now it's pretty much the same as a Baofeng. They are technically inside. They are Baofeng radios rebranded and they do some changes to them, but they're locked down. They're a race radio. The frequencies that they transmit on and receive on are limited. I've had many people show up on off-road events with these blue radios that cost twice as much as a regular Baofeng or far more than a regular Baofeng. And never once, not once, has somebody with one of those little blue race radios been able to get it to work to talk to us on any of our GMRS or even the ham frequencies that some of our members use. So for off-roading or anytime you want to talk to a group of more than just one person, we don't recommend the rugged radios. They're locked down, they're more expensive than a regular Baofeng or GMRS radio or any of the other types of radios we're going to talk about, and they're very limited. But they are blue, and the Baofeng isn't blue. So let's talk about the most popular radio and that's by far got to be the Baofeng radio. This is a uh, Baofeng F8HP. The really popular one is the Baofeng UV5R. They're exactly the same. This is a 
8 watt version of the UV5R. They come with a little rubber ducky antenna that screws on. When you get fancy, you get the big Nagoya antenna. So the UV5R, the Baofangs, are ham radios. So to use one of these legally, you need to have a ham license. Because it's a ham radio, it transmits on all the ham band frequencies. But the unique thing about the Baofeng is that it also transmits on other frequencies. You can use this to transmit on GMRS, transmit on FRS, MERS. You can talk to any of those radios on one of these Baofengs. The issue is, and you'll see a lot of whining and wailing and gnashing of teeth about it on YouTube, is that unless you're a ham radio operator and unless you have a ham license, technically you're not allowed to use these on those GMRS frequencies, FRS frequencies, and so on. So if I'm on, if I'm using my GMRS radio, we'll talk about my GMRS radio in a minute, you could talk to me on from one of these Baofangs, but you'd be breaking the law. And according to YouTube, if you do that, the SWAT team from the FCC is gonna come in from their black helicopters and you will go to jail. Now you can use these to listen to anything you want. You can listen to uh, police frequencies and fire, uh, weather, emergency bans. You can listen to a lot on these things, but to be legal, you need a ham license and you can only operate on those ham frequencies. So if you already have a Baofeng, a UV5R, be aware that unless you have a ham license and unless you're restricting your transmissions to ham bands only, you're breaking the law. So if you don't already have one of these, and a lot of people have these because they're really cheap. I think I've seen them as cheap as $23. This is probably not your best choice. So if you're out shopping for radios and you don't know what to get, this isn't the best radios. I would narrow my choice down to one of those more legal radios. All right, so the next type of radio we'll talk about is MERS, M-U-R-S. MERS is mostly used in small businesses, warehouses, that sort of thing. You don't need a license to use them, but they're limited uh, to five watts. Their range is limited. They only have like five channels. They're not the greatest choice. So if you're looking for something to use off-road or hiking, that sort of thing, MERS, M-U-R-S, is probably not the best choice. I don't even know if you can buy them anymore. All right, the next type of radio is FRS. We often also call these bubble wrap radios and they call them bubble wrap because these are the type of radios you find when you're at Walmart or Target and you see the cheap little $29 or $30 sets of walkie talkies and they're in packages, they're in bubble wrap. So they're commonly referred to as bubble wrap radios. These operate on the FRS band or under FRS rules, family radio service, which is very similar to GMRS, we'll get to that in a minute, but these have a lot of limitations. The power output is limited to two watts on most channels, only half a watt on some channels. They have a fixed antenna that you can't remove and their range is maybe a half a mile or so in good conditions. You, a lot of the uh, boxes will say nine mile range or 30 mile range and that is in best perfect conditions. I don't think you'd ever actually get anything near that out of one of these radios. So the FRS radios are really good if you're gonna be in a small group of people, you're hiking, you're going off road somewhere. They're also really handy because the channels overlap and are compatible with GMRS radios. If you're going on an off road run, say for example, with our group, we use GMRS, you can stop at Walmart on the way to the event, pick up one of these cheap little FRS 22 channel family radios, and you would be able to talk and listen to us using our GMRS radios. No license is required, very inexpensive, very easy to use. All right, so now we'll get to my favorite, the GMRS type radios. GMRS, we like to call it ham for dummies. It's got a lot of advantages of ham radio, but it's easier to use, it's easier to get the license, not as expensive, and there's no exclusive club to join. So to use GMRS, a real GMRS radio, you do have to have a GMRS license. That's not the same as a ham license. You buy a GMRS license just like you buy a fishing license. The license costs $70, you get it from the FCC, you get it right from their website. I'll leave a link below with instructions on how to go to their website and create an account and buy your GMRS license, it's really easy. That license costs $70, it covers you and your entire immediate family. The FCC assigns you a call sign and everyone in your family would just use that call sign. You do have to identify your call sign every time you transmit the first time and then at least once every 15 minutes if you're uh, in an extended conversation. 
So some of the advantages of GMRS is one, unlike the ham radio, you don't have to take a test. Unlike the simpler FRS radios, you can use a detachable antenna. The FRS radios, you can't put a larger antenna on. So you can put a larger antenna on your GMRS radio. You can hook it up to a roof antenna or you can hook it up to uh, an external antenna. You cannot do that with the cheaper FRS radios. Maximum power allowed on GMRS is 50 watts. That's hugely more than the two watts on GMRS or the three or five watts on CB radio. So when you combine a larger antenna, for example, on the installed on the outside of your vehicle, and 50 watts, if you have a radio that's capable of 50 watts, this particular one is only capable of, uh, I don't remember, but it's not 50 watts. You have to have a radio capable of 50 watts. Combine that with an external antenna and you can talk for miles. Uh, we did a video range test where we got uh, 25 miles between GMRS radios, no repeater or anything like that. So a lot of power, much more range. And also the difference between all of these radios, ham and UHF, uh, FRS, GMRS, even MERS, is that unlike our CB radio that we've thrown in the trash, this is like AM radio. And these are like FM radio. They're much more clear. They sound better. They're just better in every way. A lot like the difference between AM and FM radio. The other big advantage to GMRS is that like ham, you can use repeaters. So a repeater is a big antenna that's sitting up on a mountain somewhere with a radio connected to it. You use your radio, your ham or your GMRS that you configure to talk to that specific repeater and you transmit to that repeater and then it basically relays your signal out over a much wider range because it's up at the top of a hill or a mountain or in a good location. So if you want to talk to somebody that's on the other side of a mountain range and you have a repeater in between you and that person. So if I'm here and this is a mountain and I got somebody over here I want to talk to, I can't talk through the mountain radio to radio, but by using the repeater going up, talking to the big antenna on top of the mountain and it relays my transmission to the guy on the other side, you can get a hugely extended range. Using this radio through a repeater, I've talked to people hundreds of miles away, and it's common for ham radio operators or GMRS radio operators to talk to people in other states through a repeater or a network of repeaters. So that's a huge advantage that GMRS has over the cheaper FRS type radios and our old friend, the CB radio. It's the trash. So you get a lot of the advantages of ham radio, but unlike the ham radio, it's inexpensive. This was uh, $60, I think. I'll, I'll put a link to all of these radios uh, in the information section down below. So it's really inexpensive, gives you a lot of the advantages of ham, and GMRS is becoming more and more popular, especially with off-roading groups, because of those advantages, the extended range, the ability to use a repeater if you want to, and because it's so much easier to use and to get into when compared to ham radio. Now, I guarantee you in the comments after this video has been up for a while, you're gonna see a dozen or more comments from ham radio operators saying, oh, it's not that hard to get your ham radio license. I don't care, it's easier to get this license and I have no interest in taking a test and becoming a ham radio operator. And there's a lot of people in that same situation. I don't care, I don't wanna join your exclusive club, don't come and evangelize me. I want a radio I can talk to on the trail or when hiking or whatever with long distance. I'll go with GMRS. All right, so one other thing I want to mention, uh, especially with the FRS type radios, is on the advertisements or the box, you'll see things like security channels or sub channels. And don't be confused by those. There is no such thing as a secure FRS radio and no such thing as a sub-channel on FRS or GMRS. What they're referring to is what we call on GMRS or in HAM, a CTCSS tone. And all that is is a tone that's transmitted in your transmission. You can't hear it, but the other radios can hear it. So that if you put a tone on this radio and you put the same tone on the other radio, 
when you're talking to each other, you will only hear each other because you have the same tone. It's not a sub channel. It's there's still only 22 channels on FRS and GMRS that just limits who you can hear. So that if I'm listening to you two talk and I don't know that tone, when I talk, you won't hear me. So it's kind of the opposite of security because I can hear you talking, but you can't hear me talking. It is in no way secure. It is insecure because you might think nobody else can hear you. I might be calling you and telling you, hey, stop saying whatever you're saying. We can all hear you. You'll never hear me. You can only hear each other, but the whole world can hear what you're saying. So don't be fooled by all that. There's only 22 FRS channels and GMRS channels. There's no sub channels. There's no security. It's insecurity is what it is. So it's just something I wanted to point out because we get a lot of confusion. This brings up a good point. When uh, somebody shows up with one of these radios on our off-road events and we say, okay, we're talking on GMRS channel 16. They put their radio on channel 16 and they say something. We can hear them, but they can't hear us. And that's always 100% of the time. That's always because their stupid radio has got a security code set in it and set that way from the factory and they don't know how to get it off. So we got to go in and figure out how to turn off that stupid security code before they can talk to everybody else on the trail. So be aware of that. Okay, so that's it. Another simple video on a complicated subject. If I missed something or wasn't clear on something or if I got something wrong, leave a comment below. If I'm not able to answer it, trust me, somebody else will. So just keep checking back. I thank you for watching and we hope to see you on the trail.